Since we get so much snow in Winnipeg, you go to almost any parking lot in the city and you're gonna see at least a couple of these somewhere around the parking lot. You, you just have to put the snow somewhere. And that's a problem that lots of people don't think about if you don't live in a snowy climate is where do you put all this? You, you put it in giant piles like this all over the city. Every time I see one of these piles, I'm reminded of this story that happened to me when I was a little kid. There's this big pile of snow behind the elementary school that we went to. And it was sort of halfway on a chain link fence. Like the chain link fence was here. The bulk of the pile was here, except there's so much snow that it sort of started to slip over the other end of the chain link fence. And one weekend, I lived really close to my elementary school. Me and a friend and my dad went and we started sliding down this hill. And it was so slippery that we didn't even need sleds. We were just sliding down on our leg. We slid and we slid and we slid. And eventually we started to make a little bit of a track and make an indent in the snow with our butts because we've been sliding down it so much. I guess we wore away enough snow that we actually exposed a piece of the chain link fence and my friend slid down the chain link fence caught on his leg and he completely sliced open his thigh. We had to take him to the hospital. We had to get him tetanus shots. It was really, really bad. I feel sort of compelled to draw some parallel to real life to make this more than a useless story. So here's my attempt at a crappy metaphor. Lots of times in life, especially in YouTube, you find something that's already built for you, a trend, something popular, something you know is going to get views and you exploit it. You keep sliding down it, sliding down it, sliding down it and it's great. It's it's fun, it's easy, you didn't need to do any groundwork, you just took something that was already there and kept rolling with it. Except if you take something that's already there that you didn't build yourself, eventually you're going to see some negative effects and you're gonna slice open your leg and get tetanus shots. That's why I think it's always better to build your own brand on YouTube, rely on yourself and your ability as a filmmaker, storyteller, personality, rather than hopping on a trend or hopping on a hype beast product whatever the case may be. As terrible as that metaphor may be, I think it does hold some weight, especially in today's YouTube climate. That being said, it's freezing, so I'm getting back inside the car. <laughs> Friday nights now guys, um, I'm with Eric and I have a little bit of a cool announcement to make for you guys. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you maybe haven't heard about this, but Eric is going to New York this coming weekend because Supreme Resell is life and <laughs> I'm going with them because flights are really, really cheap. So I'm going to be in New York Friday, Sunday and Monday. Uh, January 19th to 22nd, but Saturday I'm actually going up to Philadelphia because there's Philly Soul Exchange going on. That's run by my good buddy Joe. He invited me up to the event. I was already in New York, so I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'm definitely gonna go there. I have never been to Philly. Well, actually, I drove through Philly once on a high school trip, but we didn't stop in Philly. We stopped at a rest stop outside of Philly. I don't know who planned that because if you have to stop outside of Philly or inside of Philly, you probably want to stop inside of Philly. It just seems better than a rest stop. Anyway, I'll be in Philly January 20th for Soul Exchange Philadelphia. So if you guys want to come through, say what's up. If you're in Philly or the surrounding area, I mean like you could come from Boston, you could come from New York. All the cities are so close to each other. I will be there. I will have merch. You guys can come say what's up. Check out the show. I think Seth Fowler is going to be there. Giancarlo might be there. I think, who's that crazy fat guy that just yells at people on Instagram? I think he's gonna be there. So yeah, New York and Philly is only about five or six days away. I think Eric's actually gonna come to the sneaker event in Philadelphia as well. So if you guys wanna come through and say what's up to Eric from the world famous Friday nights, definitely come do so. I picked up a pair of sneakers this morning. Now the new manager of Foot Locker, 
once again is a bit of a goof so I'm not allowed to film there and since I can't take my camera to Foot Locker I just didn't take my camera inside the mall at all because I mean Champs is awesome Champs really doesn't usually have any limited stuff so I just decided to go in there pick up a pair of kicks they're sitting in my car right now let's take a look at them So yeah, I scooped up this pair of shoes. It didn't release today, but it's something I've been thinking about for a while and I haven't bought a pair of shoes all week. Well, actually I got a pair of shoes in the mail yesterday. If you guys didn't see that, go check it out. But I didn't buy those this week. I bought those last week and they showed up this way. I, had a, I figured I could buy a pair of shoes today is what I'm trying to say. So I went over to Champ Sports. It is a pair of Adidas. Adidas, whatever you guys want to call them. And this is a pair of shoes that's got a lot of coverage on YouTube, if you want to call it that. And a pair of shoes I was curious to try out. So this comes in a really big box for most Adidas Original shoes. I'd say this is around like twice the size of a regular Adidas Originals box, which I was pretty surprised about when they took it out of the back room for me to try on. But this is the Adidas Pro Fear, which is a very, very interesting pair of sneakers. I haven't had any experience with this model. I've seen Seth Fowler got a pair of them. I've held them in hand, checked them out. They're a lot heavier than I expected, to be completely honest. But apparently the inspiration behind the shoe was trying to merge 90s style with modern technology. I honestly don't see tons of the 90s style. I can definitely see there's a big chunky midsole and it's a very heavy shoe, which is a lot to do with the 90s. And it does look sort of similar to a Hirachi or a Presto type silhouette. So I guess there are some 90s inspired things on the silhouette so I, I take back that statement but in terms of the materials it all seems to be pretty 2017 2018 whatever you want to call it these did technically come out in 2017 this was my favorite colorway by far they had a more gray and white colorway that was also nice but I just like this darker look on this pair of shoes so I want to show you the best quality images I can of these and to do that we're gonna grab some better lighting so let's get right into the sneaker room and I'll show you why I decided to buy the Adidas Pro Fears. So yeah, you can definitely see some 90s inspiration on this pair of shoes, but the materials are great. You have a knit upper, while not exactly prime knit, a little bit firmer, less stretchy than prime knit, is still the same amount of comfort. I tried these on in the store and I was actually surprised how comfortable the upper was. And then for your three stripes that hold in the laces, you have this really thick cut of a material fronted and backed with nubuck uh, some synthetic leather on the heel that comes to this weird sort of little moccasin seam is at least what it reminds me of and then my favorite part of the shoe is actually on the back heel right here you have this weird dazzle camo looking stuff which really reminds me of the earlier way of wade models back when they were using raw materials and crazy patterns and crazy colorways on the way of wades this really reminds me of a design you would have seen on those shoes and this mid Sole is insane so first off it's a brick like it is heavy it is thick it is really really large it, you sit pretty high off the ground in these like your foot goes all the way down to this part right here this last spike it cups your foot but your foot sits on this part right here like it is a large midsole and it's all covered in these spikes all over the place which I think look really really cool and then they carry on to the bottom which is something interesting as well now it's not the first time we've seen a foam midsole carry on to the bottom of the shoe Nike does it on a lot of their free runs but this is a lot more firm and robust of a foam than they use on free run so it's not going to wear down as quickly and then of course you have your rubber for the high wear areas of the toe and the heel so these are the parts that's going to get the most traction the most friction on the shoe so they put a little bit of a more durable material there so it doesn't wear down too quick on you i love this colorway i think it's really really cool just the little hits of infrared speckling throughout the knit i think are very cool and then this huge tongue pull tab here which is like an elastic seat belt pretty much it looks really really cool i think they just did a good job of putting this shoe together in a way that makes it look awesome. If they had put a boost midsole here with a rubber outsole instead of this foam midsole, I guarantee you these things would be one of the best sellers 
of the year simply because it's something that has such an awesome looking upper such a crazy shape of a midsole and don't be fooled they could definitely do a boost midsole in this shape they couldn't do it with the spikes all over don't get me wrong but they could definitely do a boost midsole that looked exactly the same as this they just chose to go with the foam on these keep the price a little bit cheaper these do retail at i believe 130 us dollars 170 canadian is what i paid so it's not the most expensive it's not cheap by any means but you look at some of adidas's upper tier models that are going for around 180 to 200 dollars and these are definitely a little bit more affordable so that's what i have to say about these shoes pretty much my full and unadulterated thoughts i'm very very excited to go to philly i'm very very excited to go to new york i'm very very excited to hear what you guys think of these so let me know down in the comment section below if you think this is a good pair of shoes a bad pair of shoes a so-so pair of shoes and also let me know if you're planning on coming to Philadelphia to say what's up at Soul Exchange. If you guys can show me that you're following me on Instagram, I'll give you $5 off my merch at Philly Soul Exchange. So go give me a follow on Instagram at the real Ray Ray 20 and come say what's up at Philadelphia and I'll be happy to give you guys a bit of a discount on the merch and I'll be happy to say what's up to you guys whether you buy the merch or not. That being said, I hope all of you guys have a great rest of your day. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. I have a huge video that I need to continue working on today. And tomorrow, it's coming soon, I promise you guys. I know I've been teasing it a lot, but it is going to be awesome. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Peace.